So we've done, I've just gone through and done a quick hone to determine how much our cylinder walls are obviously damaged. Now, a light hone is okay, but to go in and take these marks out essentially, it's gonna start working in an area with a standard piston um, that when we do put it in and take a measurement piston the ball, it's gonna be excessive. So we're gonna see obviously piston rock, slap, carry on, not good. Um, and we're gonna struggle with these because the spigot um, allowance on these is basically for what the 131 is, which is a 4.310 inch ball size. We can't go any further. If this was to fatigue, we would see that shatter and then we've got a whole engine done and dusted. But yeah, we're, we are expired here. Um, we'll hang these up on the wall, but yeah, we've still got chattering through here. So even going just quickly over, um, we can still feel that it's, it's shocking. So now with the pistons, we're going to go through some stuff with the crank. Here, our driveline side has started twisting. So we can see here, there is, where are we? There's a, a ridge or a, a knuckle there. So from here outbound, we have seen a, a twist. There is little sort of dots indicating here where there's been a shift. Um, off my eye, I can see it quite easy for you guys. Maybe not so much, but we are twisting. So that there would have um, broken at some stage. Now. We have gone with the crank pin here, we are two mil in the hole, two mil, that's 78 thou. Um, so this has started walking itself, right? This is where catastrophe gets really, it's there, right? We're ready to go. It's already happened, but there could have been more than what's going on. So that there has obviously moved its way. It's walked the rods themselves. All right, just remember we've got Nearly two mil, two mil of walk. Savage, absolutely savage. On this side, we've got 180 degrees of wear on the flywheel, right? And this is quite abrasive, right? Very, very rough. Um, our pin here is looking to be quite satisfied. However, there's obviously been walk in it. So here, where our um, balance shafts go, we've had, there's quite a lip there. So we've seen a wear from obviously the force of this crank separating, it's got no end float on the crank. All it can do is meet and bind with whatever it wants to touch and destroy here and here, All right? If you can see that, it's probably a bit dark, but there we go. So there is quite a lip there. So it's been gouging all this um, all this engine case. This, this has gone into fragmentation. It's spinning through the motor and everything else. Um, so we're at that point now. Um, now with the um, crank itself, the flywheels separating, we've obviously had a fair amount of side throw to the rod. So what's that actually done? With the piston, as you can see, if I can get a better shot, sorry. You can see there that we've got material off in that edge there on that corner. So with side load, um, the rod having availability to move around, it's then pressurized itself against the, the piston. So when everything's up and together, it's it's just been, you know, it's it's been doing its job there. It's been wrecking it. So, so with that run out on the uh, pinion side, obviously being in a in an egg shape, it's been walking itself and everything. We've seen the oil pressure obviously shift due to the fact that the oil pump isn't rotating in harmony of being round. You know, it's not going round. It's going up and down and getting thrown everywhere, and it bites into the um, into the oil pump housing itself, which then creates uh, a, a, an open cavity, so to speak, to lose oil pressure availability. And we'd see such things with this. Now, the oil squirters that come out of it, um, they were actually okay. They weren't swarfed up and not full of uh, uh, celastic or you know anything that could go for the engine case assembly or whatever um, to starve some of the stuff. So 